Hello, good evening and welcome back once again for the fifth and final time this week for In The Know brought to you by The Racing Post and Coral as Glorious Goodwood comes to a close on Saturday afternoon with of course uh, the Stewards Cup to head the proceedings uh, and uh, we'll be talking plenty about that as the evening goes on I'm sure. Uh, which way will they go? Far side, near side, middle, bit of both? I don't know, who knows but uh, I uh, hope we'll be finding a nice price winner uh, in the sprint tomorrow. Uh, you could have found a, a nice price winner uh, in the big handicap this afternoon, of course, if you just kept it simple and back those inside draws. All barn coming down the rail from that inside box to beat blue for you, David O'Mara. We said last night he must have uh, bribed the, uh, uh, the person doing the draw for that race and it worked out quite nicely for him. Uh, we had a uh, Shadwell cast-off 1-2 in the uh, the King George, of course, as well, uh, as uh, Cardem won once again, former Stewards Cup winner, of course, beating uh, Rassel uh, into uh, to second place. Uh, and plenty more to talk about as well, including uh, a very lively thoroughbred stakes where they were all over the shop uh, and that German Guinness form was given a big boost uh, with the second and the fifth finishing 1-2. Very exciting to see if, if Maljum goes to France in a few weeks' time and then maybe he could be the best of those three-year-old milers for William Haggis. So I'm sure we'll have had a smile on his face after that race. But let us know how you got on today. Like and subscribe to the stream. We are, of course, live on YouTube and Facebook. And I've got the chat box in front of me. So please let me know what you think about tomorrow's racing. Uh, my name is Ross Briley. I am joined once again by a top panel. To my left, Mr Paul Keeley, who I'm sure as blue for you came travelling like a dream in the Golden Mile, <laughs> you were counting your cash only to see the As one was, horse yeah. you didn't want the to pick The one horse you. that never goes past, go miles past and sprint yeah. clear and win. Oh, all bad. I mean, I can't even claim him as my cliff horse. He's everybody's cliff horse, isn't he? He like, is, no, yeah. I, mean, I imagine virtually every punter in the country has seen how eye-catching he's been at some point and backed him next time and then realised that that's what he does. But he got it right today, fair play to him. Yeah, yeah. He won very easily. I mean, you know, winning like that, you'd say you'd follow up, wouldn't you? But we know him too well. Yeah, I mean, to be fair to him, he is the, I mean, they've managed to get him the best part of a stone lower than last year, yeah, haven't they? So yeah, it's true, it's true. Yeah, it turns out every, just, um, every horse yeah. has its mark. But again, track one beats track two. You, you texted me, didn't you, forecast 156 quid or whatever it was. And, yeah. You know, it's quite simple, really. It's the sixth track one winner in the last 21 years. Uh, you know, when you consider there's nearly 20 runners every, every year. Yeah. Uh, you know, just you know, play it simple. Yeah, and, uh, and Revich spoiling the, uh, the tri-cast, because I think... Um, Boxes four and seven were in right. Yeah, fourth absolutely. And fifth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Re Revich, very talented horse, Revich, isn't he? Like, yeah. You know, you know, and he's done well from there. Done well from the draw he had but earlier on the day. Super Super Jack got a typical Goodwood run through mm. or lack of run through. Um, I think he probably would have won if it had been been out earlier. So and yeah, Mister Miller just keeps on winning. doesn't Yeah, he it? does keep winning. Yeah, he does keep winning, and, and you know he is a horse that I have been backing in the past. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, but uh, no, I really fancied Super Super Jack today, so. So, a frustrating day, but um, got a few quid on the German, so it wasn't a complete disaster. Yes, of course, yeah, yeah. Rocco Gianni getting a, a beautiful ride um, until he uh, smashed up the two on his inside, of course. Uh, but, uh, and, and Cardem. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Siegel, uh, I know you're uh, you're not mad into your uh, your sprints, but horses for courses, Stewards Cup, uh, Shadwell Castoffs want two, and uh, and they won a, a fair old clip in that contest. What did you like about this afternoon's action? I was confused, Ross. If truth be told, I thought, and the, well, just watching the sprints. I mean, just it's just this is why I don't like them because that race they all went on to the far side, and then in the six furlong nursery they all come up the near side. I just don't know where they're going to go in the Stewards Cup tomorrow. I think that's that's one of the complexities of sprint handicaps, and why I try and avoid them. And if I do go for them, just forget about all the you know all the fluff that goes around it like draws and pace and stuff and just try and tip the horse that thinks going to win because it's so confusing if you'd have told me that they would have all come up the stand side after watching the uh king george the you know by half an hour before i'd have said you're nuts they're all going to go in the middle and then they all come up the stand side and the ones in the middle had no chance so punters you pay your money you take your choice i have no idea where they're going to go in the stewards cup tomorrow i mean but, but the i mean so they followed Frankie in the in the King George, obviously. They've basically, they followed the fastest horse in the King George, and they followed the fastest horse in the Nursery. Tom, it's just working out which is the fastest horse early on, so you know where they're going to follow. Yeah, but if <laughs> yeah, but they, the jockeys are going to know that too, and so yeah. someone's going to go fast on this side, someone's going to go fast in the middle, someone's going to go fast on the far on the far side. 
every time I try and work out where the best pace is, I get it wrong. I mean, I remember doing a, a, a thing in the paper where we had pace maps in the paper, mm. uh, which side's going to be favoured. We did it for about three years. I think I got every single one wrong. <laughs> You know, and so you know, and I wasn't being stupid. I, was, yeah. I took hours over them trying to work out which one went past here, which one went past there. I just think it's really, really hard. Yeah. And so we can all say this is where the pace is going to be, but it doesn't work out like that. And so, you know, I just think, yeah, gee, yeah. I think we all come up. And I don't know what's going to happen. It could be <laughs> anywhere. So don't worry about it. Yeah. Just try and back the horse who thinks the best. Well, that's what I mean. I think, yeah. I mean, silence. And Kieran Fallon clearly that that horse got beat at Chester last time out when a, when a, when a, uh, got beat by the front runner at Chester last time out, and it got going too late. And the only thing it takes to ruin a pace map, Tom, is a jockey changing his mind and going, "I'm not. Uh, that's not happening to me again. I'm just going to do the complete exactly. opposite." <laughs> Exactly. So these days, I love it when people say, oh, the pace map tells me this, the pace map tells me that. Yeah. If you think you've got no pace on your side, there's no point going slow on your side because you won't win anyway. So yeah. someone's going to go fast if they think they're not on the right side. So therefore, I, I, I don't know. I mm. don't know what will happen tomorrow. Uh, people will tell me they know. I, I, I just think it's, it's, it's up in the air. So hopefully, hopefully the West Horse wins. That's all you want. Yeah, uh, although admittedly today, you know, the King George was won by um, uh, uh, a group horse coming into it off the back of a win who'd won the Stewards' Cup, and the Nursery was won by um, a, a horse off a, you know, in, in, the, in the top of the weights who'd been running a listed company behind group horses. So it's not exactly like they were completely shock results. Um, but uh, my favourite thing is when you when you think there's a lot of front runners in here, uh, and then one horse uh, can't get to the front, so suddenly becomes the perfect horse who normally is a front runner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and finds that they've gone too fast, and then they come yeah. through. And... Which is like Rocco Giani today, yeah. who went off yeah. too quick. At... They went off, ma he went off massively quick on uh, on Hotline Bling, didn't they? So. Yeah, so it worked out perfectly for him. Fun and games, Simon Clare. Fun and games, trying to trying to work out where the pace is going to come from. But um, we just want winners. Never mind these pace maps, eh? Yeah, I think that's right. And I mean, you know, the um, the you know the big the big the big price winners today we sort of came to our rescue a little bit you know master milliner in the coral goodwood stakes obviously it was a 14 to 1 chance um all bam 20 to 1 winning the gold mile albeit from that stall one so i think it would have had its backers and uh, the people who really followed that huge uh, draw uh pointer and then rumstar won our coral nursery so the three coral races today threw up nice price winners uh for the bookies but um yeah it was a bit of a better day for bookmakers overall today rocky giani Obviously, we tipped it up um, on the show last night. I, I actually was, I was cut off last night, and I would have tipped that KS Chorister in the last. And honestly, guys, it was. Uh, we can thing. all claim that, Simon. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, 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 sure. Uh, but, and, um, uh, yeah, and uh, it wasn't. It, well, to be fair, it wasn't our fault that time, Simon. I think didn't you? You you, you need to charge your phone, basically. <laughs> no, no. I, I don't think I got. Typically, I'm on my laptop, so I actually got phoned by someone and it cut it off. I haven't quite mastered the art of actually having my phone dedicated to the show. But listen, I'm on the laptop tonight, so I won't be interrupted. So watch out for that last race tip. There you go. Well, you've put the you put the pressure on yourself there, haven't you? <laughs> Uh, but uh, good evening to everyone watching at home as well. Uh, plenty of people um, uh, having some decent uh, winners today. Michael Grady had Orban, Rocco Gianni and Rebel Romance. Uh, so uh, not a bad day for, uh, for him. Uh, and um, uh, quite a few others as well. Uh, two winners today, Master Miller and uh, the German horse in the second race. And yeah, a couple of people um, uh, followed me in on Ring of Bearer. Travelled like a dream, didn't get home over the trip, did it? So keep an eye on, the, on that one next time out. Uh, but plenty of other uh, opinions, I am sure. Let's move on to tomorrow then, uh, the final day of glorious Goodwood. Uh, we might not know where the, uh, the pace is going to come from uh, in the, uh, the sprints, but we uh, might know where the winner is going to come from in the first, as we've got an odds-on shot in the shape of Richard Hannon's classic for the seven furlong uh, maiden. Uh, five to six, the market leader. The Foxes is four to one. Loyal touch at five to one. Hunk Papa at 10 to 1, Bacento at 11, Scorch 16s uh, with play up Sky Blues and Runaholic and a bigger price, uh, the, uh, the other couple as well. Uh, and uh, normally you get a bit frustrated, you know, why, why have we got the Maidens on the card in, uh, at big festivals? First race of the day as well, an odds on shot in a two year old race, surely come on. Uh, then you look at the form, you look at the speed figure, you look at the trainer, you look at the run last time out, Keels, and you think, yeah, I can understand why. Well, yeah, exactly. In fact, he was 6 to 4 on the first shows came out, um, which I actually thought was a massive price. I didn't get involved because it's not me, but but I mean, it's getting to, to as short as, you know, it's, a no, it's definitely a no play for me now. But um, yeah, it was just a massively, massively eye-catching dwell at the start. Uh, got, got, you know, got stopped in his run a couple of times, wasn't exactly given a hard time 
uh, once he got out. It's one of those, if you give him a, you know, if he really got after him, he'd probably have won, but might not have done him any favours in the long term. So, you know, I think if you bet in maidens, you've got to understand that, you know, their entire racing career isn't revolve around their first race. Uh, he's going to know an awful lot more this time. Unless the Foxes is as good as um, uh, Ashley Murphy was saying earlier in the season, he said he was, you know, he was one of Andrew Balding's best before the Chesham, because we mm. had him on uh, one of these shows um, just before Royal Ascot. Uh, and obviously he blew out then like a lot of horses in that, in that Chesham did, a lot of the fancied runners. So he may be a fair bit better than he's been able to show so far, but I think it's, uh, it's all down to classic, really. Yeah. Uh, the foxes though could get you could get you know beat you into second or third get a nice nursery mark and suddenly they've got something to work with but uh, yeah classic is very short here uh, but uh, yeah Newbury Newbury uh, two-year-old race has been working out very nicely indeed this uh, this season Tom I've had uh, some decent figures for a few of them um, the one that this was in uh, last time out was one of them the horse who finished fifth last time uh, behind him uh, came out and won last night Far Richard Hannon as well if he just blindly backed two-year-olds who ran at Newbury uh, on their next start this year, Tom. Um, you'd have won 21 from 124, and you'd be £53 up to a level stake profit. There's been a lot of good races there. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. It's a nice track, isn't it? I mean, if I was running a two-year-old first time out, I wouldn't run him at Goodwood. I'd run him at New Newbury or somewhere nice, wouldn't you? I mean, I just think that the, the maidens at Newbury, uh, Goodwood, everyone says they're brilliant and all this and that. I just think they're a bit moderate myself. I don't think trainers really like running them here apart from Hannon and, and Johnson. So I think, you know, your Gosdens and your Applebee's and your, I know Appleby had one earlier in the week with a horse that he'd run here before, but your best trainers don't, I know Brian doesn't tend to come over here that very often with two year olds. So for me, they're not that strong. And I think the first two in the market stand out. I think Classic will win. And I think four to seven is probably about right now. Yeah. OK, uh, he's potentially bred to win a Classic as well, Simon. Um, he's, uh, he's entered in all the right races and, uh, yeah, he's uh, gone from odds against to quite comfortably odds on. Yeah, it's quite interesting. There's only been, I think it's only been a couple of um, favourites winning the last 10 years. There's been quite a few big price winners of this, which is just interesting given, he, you, know, it, you know, maidens often attract, you know, do have short price favourites. He does, I mean, I always think when you name a horse Classic, you know, it's been like, I remember my first year on the job, I laid very big prices about King of Kings when Aidan O'Brien was a young trainer without the great reputation he has now as a two-year-old when he won first time out and got filled in by lots of people in the press room. And uh, yeah, you don't name horse King of Kings unless you think it's decent. If you name horse Classic, you've got to be quite hopeful it's going to be quite decent. But um, he's been really well backed. He was five to six uh, when I noted down the prices about 20 minutes ago, and he's now four to seven. So that's a big move in the last half an hour or so. So it de definitely smacks a huge stable confidence. I thought Lord Touch was interesting just because he was very, very, he ran an extraordinarily green race. I've never seen horse run so green as he did at Salisbury when favourite on debut, which is quite interesting. And the fact that he comes here, you know, with the Johnson team, with Ryan Moore booked, I just thought, I mean, I'm not saying back, it's a, a half one now at around 11 to 2, whether he's almost an each way Bex, I think he'll be in the three. And and I'm not convinced, you know, the classic obviously looked obvious, very short, but a lot of favourites have been beat at short price in this race over the last few years. So uh, maybe one to take on, we'll see. Okay, but uh, probably follow the winners though. Um, three Group Two winners and two Group Three winners have uh, 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 have gone on to, uh, to that level in the past decade out of this uh, this contest, including the likes of DXB and Duke of Hazard and uh, Dutch Connection. So some nice horses win this race. Um, Classic is a uh, fairly long odds on to do so uh, tomorrow in the opener. Uh, moving on then uh, from the the 105 uh, at, uh, at Goodwood uh, to the uh, the second race on the card, uh, which is the the Steward Sprint uh, Handicap, uh, a consolation race for the Stewards Cup, of course. Uh, Coral uh, sponsoring it here, Simon, and um, yeah, where uh, I was going to say where are all the sprinters? But there's a 0 to 85 at Donny, there's a 0 to 85 at Hamilton, there's a listed race at Chester on Sunday, there's the Windsor final on Monday, there's a Ripon handicap, um, there was a race they could have run earlier on in the week as well. Um, yeah, there's uh, lots of races going around for half-decent six furlong sprinters, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly. I think it's something we'll have a chat with um, the race course about, really. Maybe, maybe we'll look, try and up the value of this, because obviously the Stewards Cup itself is run for £250,000, which is a fantastic prize. And um, this is a £50,000 race. Maybe that is part of the reason, like you said, you know, you don't get in the Stewards Cup. And then there are lots of other options. I think Richard Fye was saying there's a race of the same value up uh, you know, near the stable rather than come down to Goodwood for his runner. Someone, as you say, the Windsor race on Monday's worth 75k. So it's probably something to look at because what you want is you want this consolation cup to be, you know, a pretty big field. I mean, ideally around 20 runners because that's what you you like to have. But still, it's a good 12 runner race. Maybe maybe Lethal Lethal Levi, you know, frightened a few off. You know, a very unexposed, progressive three-year-old, seven to four favourite. Um, you know, so yeah, 
it's it's a race that um uh, you know we'll have a chat about for next year but we're paying four places not three so the extra place despite the 12 runners and we've got a special in the know on Le lethal levi we're going nine to four i think to the end of the program he's seven to four currently so nine to four lethal, Le lethal levi with uh, uh i think it's a max 20 pound bet for that um and yeah listen if you fancy lethal levi you know seven to four nine to four that's a decent price mm, okay lethal levi is seven to four uh incredibly well in uh at tom as well um winning um, with uh, with plenty in hand on his uh, his last couple of starts in good races. Um, the only concern for me, though, yeah, front running at Newmarket, wonderful. Front running over six at Goodwood, a little bit tougher. Uh, can be, can't it? It depends. Look, I'm, I, if he's got ten pounds in hand, which he might well have, then it won't make any difference how he runs, will it? Uh, I personally think he'll probably win, but I don't really want to back sprinters at seven or four in uh, handicaps. I thought it was, you know, one of the old boys. I thought maybe something like treacherous who's often run well in this race, might go well for the each-way punters in this, but to sprint, I've not really paid much attention to it because I thought, it's really disappointing. I you know, I know size on the on the show here, but when you have a 12 run, you know, you think of the air races, you can fill three of them with 30 runners, basically, can't you? The Bronze Cup has 30, yeah. you know? So it's a, it is a bit disappointing that you only get 12 for this. I, I, I don't know why. I really don't know why. Ten years ago, you used to get 25 in it. No problem. Yeah. But like, yeah, but like but I said, there's a there's a to 105 at Ripon. There's the Windsor final. There's in the next between yeah, between this race and, and Monday afternoon, there's five other races that those horses will go for. So if you go if you've got six races, you want double figures. You you, you need 60 or 70 sprinters between mm -hmm. 80 and 90 to be entered in, in in 48 hours. Yeah, but there were 70 odd entered at the five day stage weren't there so i don't know you, you might you might be right maybe they're all going elsewhere but 12 is a 12 and yeah know. there was 25 last year wasn't there like, you know so it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. i mean there has been one year when there was about nine as well wasn't there like you know yeah. in, soft in ground, recent, I guess soft it, ground yeah. yeah there's i guess yeah, the thing is it's not be, it's not the weather hasn't changed so it's been so all the it's not as if no, all the opportunities no, there you, you, no. you, uh, have carried on being no, there. Like you said, there's so many different options. We've also got the case that you know there's an extremely well in horse. Um, yes, there is yeah. that as well. So you know that might have played some sort of hand. I mean, you know, I mean, James has saw James Knight on Twitter. He said, "Never be afraid of a, never be afraid of a, of one horse." But I mean, it might be the case that some people are. Yeah, uh, yeah. he is. Like you know, he won off 85. He won the big three-year-old handicap at Newmarket, uh, and then he followed up by was under a seven-pound higher mark. Uh, winning by two lengths very easily, and he can run off a pound lower than that now because it's, he's got a double penalty, three pound for each win, but he's still lower than he was last time. So, uh, on form, he definitely, you know, he, he's definitely easily the most likely winner. And in fact, nine to four won't be beaten tomorrow, not in a million years. If anybody wants to take their score, you won't be, you know, you won't be anywhere near that tomorrow. Mm. Um, there are bits of four and five places around though in, in, in the marketplace and I was I was looking at it I was gonna I was gonna back Nelson Gay because I backed him last time I thought he was quite eye-catching I with five furlongs but then I looked he just didn't run that well the two times he's run here so I went right down uh, to the outside a dark shot who's mm -hmm. got plenty of downhill track form in, in, in his life twice twice second in the dash he's run run well here um, ran badly um, last seen uh, on his last official run ten days ago uh, eighth of eleven, I think it was at Southern. But but he you know, obviously two days ago, well yesterday, he won the Magnolia Cup from start yeah. to finish. Had the whole field spread eagled. Former that means absolutely nothing, obviously, but it is a confidence booster. The horse won three times in the space of thirteen days last year, and is actually lower in the weights than for the last of those wins now by three pound. So you know, and he's just one of those horses he'd never in a million years um, normally get into a race like this because he's rated only sixty nine. So he's getting loads of weight off everything. And I think, you know, you know, he just at a big price, he appealed to me to grab one of those places. OK. Uh, dark shot, then, is a 33-to-one shot well, with Carl for the, the four yeah. places. So, uh, yeah, uh, dark shot each way, four places, uh, clinging on to fourth after going maybe a bit too fast, and Keels will be happy, Simon. Yeah, listen, I like him a lot. Funny enough, I was um, uh, chatting to Scott Dixon today. I think his wife, uh, Scott's wife, won the Best Dressed Lady at uh, Goodwood's Day. I think it was some fantastic holiday prize. So he's won the Magnolia Cup yesterday. His wife, wife's won the Best Dressed Lady prize today. He'll probably go and win the consolation of Road with Dark Shot. And um, yeah, I know the owner quite well, Simon Chapel. He's got quite a lot of horses with Scott. And, you know, it did, I know it's only the Magnolia Cup. It's funny, I've, I've, over the years, I've already looked at a lot of charity races. It's amazing how often horses have won the charity, charity races. And then next time out, won proper races, you know. And, and 
she only just pulled it up at the very end of the far shoot, even though they shortened the course at the Magnolia Cup. And it's, it, you know, it's really well. It didn't get anywhere near the front at Southern last time. It didn't quite get home at Doncaster the time before. But this downhill's fast five, you know, sorry, fast six um, might well suit. So uh, I, I was actually going to, I was going to mention Dark Shot as well, actually enough. So um, I'm definitely going to back it now that Keels has tipped it. There you go. A uh, big price potentially for Scott Dixon, but Lethal Levi is 7 4 and is very well in. Um, as for the uh, the rest, what have we got? Any other opinions in this? Uh, if Stone of Destiny wins, he's giving up punting, says Jonathan Sherritt. Um, I think mm -hmm. probably a lot of them said that about uh, Orban a few times, so those horses do pop up every now <laughs> yeah. and then. Destiny sounds as the lamplighter. I think the amount of times I would have given up punting if I've ever used that line. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, which actually, before we move on, we must mention the Paul Keeley, um, the, 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 the unbeatable system. Uh, which is that uh, last time out you really fancied Nelson Gates. Yeah, well, that's uh, it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. And, and I've, I've got to worry about him this time. So, yeah, yeah. fill your boots, basically. Yeah, never got involved last time. Keel's really fancied him. Next time out is the time to get on. Uh, Lethal Levi, though, 7 to 4 or 9 to 4, uh, if you want to back him on that price boost. Uh, moving on then, moving up in trip for the next race, the uh, the 210 here, the, the Coral Summer, Summer Handicap. A mile and six furlongs is the distance. Uh, and uh, and Trawlerman is uh, four to one market leader for the uh, the Gosden team with uh, Benoit de la Sayette in the saddle, uh, fresh off the back of a, uh, a win at the track. Sophie Stevens five to one, Valley Forge six to one, Bagdoor thirteen to two, Semhan sevens, HMS President eleven to one, Sam Cook is twelve to one, Red Flyer is fourteen to one, and then it's bigger prices. The rest fourteen of them line up here, Keels for this uh, this race. And again, uh, there's a few of yours. I mean, Sophie Stevens is another one of those on your system. Uh, yeah, he's you, unbeaten uh, since I stopped backing him. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what have you what have you given up on today? Because well, I'm, I'm backing it now. Well, well uh, yeah, I'm still not backing Sophie Stevens. Um, I've got uh, you know there was a there's a race that so that I backed Sophie Stevens in at mm -hmm. Newmarket, and, uh, and then I backed him at Epsom after that. But the race at Newmarket. He was well beaten by Semhan, uh, who won very easily uh, in May. And he's actually two pound worse off with Semhan now. And Valley Forge was behind Semhan as well, and he's two pound better off, but was beaten four and a half lengths. And the only one Semhan's had since was at Royal Ascot, when he got stopped in his run two or three times. And he, you know, he wouldn't have beaten Candleford, who was a, a runaway winner, but he'd have been definitely amongst the places then. And that was a mile and four. He was doing all his best work at the end. I don't think we've seen the best of him. Uh, and I think he's a massive, massive player. I don't understand why, I, you know, I would have him ahead of Sophie Stevens and Valley Forge in the betting. So, you know, and Trawler Man's been the big gamble. He's um, flattered to deceive. He's got himself in all sorts of trouble on his last two starts as well. Um, I don't know whether he'll do that again. What, you know, he's become well, he's come to a, the right track, he's a bit, hasn't he? Yeah, he's a bit, bit of a frustrating horse, isn't he? Uh, and the other one I backed um, uh, a couple of days ago was Bagdor as well. Um, Off just the back of that Inverness form. Yeah, well, obviously beat Inverness last time. Uh, uh, travelled really well through the race, uh, and it is one of these strong travelling horses. He's won. He's been in the first two and seven of his last eight runs. He's won four of them. He's won both his starts at one mile six, and he's just an uncomplicated horse who get, does everything right a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is a step up in class for him because I don't think he's run above class three, um, but he's probably going to be up to it. Yeah, and Chris Wall, he's. Uh Patient, isn't he? he takes oh, it step by yeah. step by yeah, step, and they, get, they yeah. often get to group level. Yeah, absolutely. And this, um, you know, this could this could be another one. I, I, you know, I'm going to play the forecast those two because I really like the pair of them. Okay, uh, Bagdor is a 13 to two shot, uh, and Semhan is a seven to one shot. Yeah, but um, I guess the reason Semhan isn't favoured is because um, he's not trained by a, a, a Gosden or a Johnston or a Balding. Um, obviously, uh, George Baker probably missed in the market a little bit. He had a very big price winner uh, of a handicap at, uh, at Ascot uh, last week, so. Uh, he's in good form, uh, but trawler man uh, Tom, a few things to throw to you here. First off, a hood on uh, a horse running over a mile and six. Uh, I know you don't particularly like uh, that angle on on staying races. And I thought the, the the most interesting thing about this race was there are a few horses with very very good course form that are very big prices. HMS President, Red Flyer, even you can Glen, who was um, you know running in the uh, the Glorious Stakes last year and is here off a a mark of 102 in a handicap, so quite a bit of Goodwood form. Tricky customers at the top of the betting. What did you make of it? I thought you were going to say the Max We Can. I thought you were going well, to throw yeah, out the Max one. We Can. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, he was the. He, I thought he was the funny one at a huge price with the visors on for the first time because he's back on a mark. I was like Keels. I, I thought the head of the market was wrong. How Soapy Stevens won last time, I will never know. It was the biggest fluke, I think, in the history of flukes. I thought there was about 14 horses pulled up and 
everyone else got in everyone else's way. And when the music stopped, Soapy Stevens was, on, was in front when he looked like he was never going to be in front at any other stage of the race. So I want to take him on, even though he's uh, clearly in good form. Uh, Trawler Man just pulls too hard, which is why they put the hood on. I just don't get Trawler Man, why people like Trawler Man anymore. I've fallen for him a couple of times. One day he's going to bounce back because clearly he shows a lot of talent but at home, but he hasn't shown it on the course for ages now. So he's off. Valley Forge, I think, well, he's... He, yeah, it just takes a bit of time. I was expecting him to be a lot better than he was after he won that Melrose last yep, year yep, yep. in really good style. I thought I expected him to sort of take off, sort of Coltrane style, but he hasn't really. He struggled at uh, Haydock when he won, when he was probably quite a good thing. And he, he went OK for a long way in the Northumberland plate last time, but he was just a bit woolly at the finish. I don't mm. know if that's a Would good he, um, Tom, I don't, know what, uh, I don't know what mark you're getting the e-bore off, but um, Melrose winner going back to the track in a few few weeks that might be yep. their plan well exactly because he's he's a win and you're in isn't he so he mm. he gets a run so he'll be getting lots of weight because the ebor is uh it's one of those races now we have to be rated literally 105 to get in we, what we what we need is a consolation ebor that's what we need <laughs> and uh and but valley forge will get in off his current mark he'll be getting a stone off the top weights because he's a win and you're in he won the melrose last year and you get in so maybe that's his race I like Keel's thought, the two to concentrate on were Bag, Door and Semharm. If I'd been having a better week, I would have probably tipped them both. But in the end, I just ended up on Bag, Door, just simply because he's, he's just less complicated. Semharm can pull a bit. He's a bit keen. And he's and that was just my slight negative against him. The Bag, Door's dead straightforward. I think the form last time was probably very good. He was giving stones to two good three-year-olds i think the second berkshire whatever his name is is probably pretty good uh so uh i ended up on bag door but i am very worried about semhan i just didn't like the top of the market okay top of the market is though trawler man at four to one he might might well be an all-weather horse isn't he trawler man given how he won at chelmsford so be stevens five to one valley forge at uh, six uh, I'll take, like I said, a couple of, uh, of Goodwood horses. HMS President, who got up in the shadows of the post over a mile and a half here uh, back in June on fast ground. Uh, yeah, beaten out of sight behind Sophie Stevens last time out, but uh, this is his track. Uh, and in that race as well was Red Flyer, who um, it looks like he was comfortably beaten, but he travelled like a dream in that contest. And then he finished second to Sophie Stevens last time at 100 to 1. Sophie Stevens is a 5 to 1 shot. I can't quite understand why Red Flyer is a 14 to 1 shot, given he's got course form and pretty much exactly the same form line last time out without being uh, overly penalised. So, yeah, HMS President and Red Flyer for me, please, Simon. Extra places? Yes, we have. We're paying four places, not three. And um, there has been money this evening for Bagdor and Semhan. Semhan's ridden by Holly Doyle, who obviously had a big winner yesterday. But uh, she's got six rides uh, tomorrow. And we've got an in the no special on Holly Doyle to ride a winner. Any uh, with at least one winner tomorrow, nine to four instead of 13 to eight. If you add up all the prices of her horses, it works out very short about even money, but that's taking into case, case all the margin, all the races. But she's got a good book, and Sam Hahn's probably one of her leading contenders. Uh, he's a seven to one chance, uh, 610 carbon in the 355. Then the likes of Forbearance, the Lily Langtree, Tab Deed in the Shoes Cup, Abate in the 140, and uh, the City's Phantom's a big price at in the 430. So six good rides, Holly Doyle special, nine to four, the rider winner. And Semhan, by the sounds of the uh, guy's tip, might be the one the most likely to do so. Hmm. Well, I know Keels fancies one of Holly's later on the card as well, so um, nine, nine to four might be your uh, your bag there, mate. I think I've backed them all already. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, yeah, yeah. What price the um, what price the accumulator? Never mind. You only Never. need one. You only need one. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Should have yeah. waited for that, shouldn't I? I've already got a terrible <laughs> price overall. Get the, uh, <laughs> get the saver on it. Get the saver on it. Uh, Marlon, six then for the Coral Summer Handicap. Kills the selection? Or? Yeah, I've backed I've back Sam Harlan Bag. Bag door. OK. Uh, Tom? Uh, I've backed Bag door. OK, lovely. And I'll take that course form with HMS President and Red Flyer. And Simon? I'll go with Valley Forge. I think the Andrew Baller horse is running solid. And, um, yeah, he just didn't quite get home at, in the uh, Northumberland Plate, which was a good race. So I think he'll go well here. OK, a few people fancy Valley Falls. Jonathan Sherritt, Darren Walker, Destiny Sounds as well. Uh, and, uh, and Dave Orton agrees with you. Dave Orton's gone for Semhard. There you go. Yeah, that's where you get your selections from, it isn't is, it? isn't it? Yeah, could be Dave. <laughs> yeah, you just give, give Dave a call. Uh, go through this car for me, will you, Orton? Job done. Uh, moving on then, another mile and six race here. Uh, classy little lineup here for the, the Lily Langtree Stakes. Uh, group two contest for the Feliz and Mares. Uh, and C. La Rosa. 
Uh, obviously coming out of one of the most controversial races of the season. Heads the better get 15 to 8. Emily Dickinson is 2 to 1. Yes, yes is 15 to 2. Viola is 10 to 1. Forbearance at 11s. And Glenn Artley 12s. Urban Artist 12s. And Typewriter is the 33 to 1 outsider of the lot then for uh, tomorrow's uh, 2.45. Um, Tom, I'm going to uh, come to you for this, uh, this one first. And again, if it's trained by William Haggis and it's in these silks, it's going to be market leader, of course. Uh, but um, to be fair to Celia Rosa, she has rock solid form, and um, she was uh, she was comfortably beaten by what looks a hugely progressive free win last time out. Uh, albeit she was probably a third best horse in that race, given the the first and third kind of took each other out a little bit, and uh, and Jim Crowley's mount was coming back for more. So do you think she should be this short? No, definitely not. I was really disappointed with her last time. The other two smashed each other up, had a massive ruck on the rail. He went too clear and would have been third in another I mean, another stride. I thought she was moderate, if truth be told. I think, I think you look, free win could be very good, but I think we're basing it on the fact that everyone saw what happened and suddenly she's a world beater when she hadn't been before. Uh, maybe, she, maybe she is really good and maybe C. La Rosa did well to, to run, to, to finish third, second to her. But no, I want to take her on. I want to take her on. I'm not convinced by Emily Dickinson. I thought the Irish Oaks was a was a was a was a really moderate race too. Uh, she stays well, and she did get in a bit of trouble. She stumbled, and she will definitely like the trip. So she could she could improve. Just they were they didn't. She ran at Lingfield in the Lingfield uh, Oaks trial, and they said, oh, she didn't like the track. We're not going to Epsom with her now. She's coming to Goodwood. But that's maybe. Maybe she's grown up. Maybe she she won't mind the track. But I wanted to take them on. Uh, I thought maybe Viola was the one. She's got form ties in very closely with Cela Rosa. She was a bit disappointing last time, I have to admit. But if you throw that out, I think she's got just as good a chance as the Fav. And uh, I like James Fanshawe at this meeting. So uh, maybe Viola for me. But it's not a race I, I like that much with the shape. Also thought Urban Artist could go well uh, for Huey. Uh Clearly didn't stay the two and a half miles at Royal Ascot the time before, last time. But ran really well, got wiped out by Believe in Love, didn't she, at York the time before. So they would be my two against the field. I just thought it was worth taking on the top of the market once again. OK, see the rest then, 15 to 8. Emily Dickinson is 2 to 1. Um, uh, Viola is a 10 to 1 shot. An urban artist, of course, um, was, uh, was beaten in the previous... Handicap we just talked about last season in soft ground, so she does have uh, course form as well. Uh, we've also got uh, Glenn Artney, who's been in fairly good nick uh, this season. Uh, yes, yes, who against uh, looks a, a really nice progressive type for the the Beckett stable last year, albeit you get the feeling that it'll be back end targets for her. And then there's another one, Keels, that you quite like the look of. Yeah, four bounce. So just case on the best form of last year, she's a match for all of these. Mm. Uh, just as he hasn't shown it yet in three starts this year, finishing sixth, seventh, and fifth. Now, last time at Leopardstown, I thought she showed a little bit more spark, and enough for me to think she might be coming back to form. Um, last year, she ran, she won the Gultry Stakes at, at York at a big price under Holly Doyle, who's only had, he's only had three rides for Jessica Harrington, two wins in a second. Uh, the last one being uh, four bounce in the Gultry's when she was twelve to one. Uh, and I just thought it was interesting that she's coming over this. Obviously, Jessica Harrington's having a great time with a bit of Galway as well. Uh, so the, the, the yard's doing okay, and yeah, on the best form, she's no um, 10, 11, or one shot. Mm. She's also two from two on good to firm as well. Yeah, she you know she she, yeah, she, she won't have any issues with the ground. Um, so I think you know I think she'll run well. She needs to, she does need to improve a fair bit on what she's done this yeah. year, but I think it's quite possible she will. Yeah, you're right because she's got a rate of 101. Um, at and the she was moment. 104, I think, as well, wasn't she? She was 107. After, 107 yeah, 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 yeah. After the uh, the peak of that, which would you know put her ahead of Celia Rosa for a start. And that, that York form as well, I know she was well beaten in that, but Lilac oh. Road and Aristia yeah, second se and third behind Nashua. Nashua, yeah. yeah. So. But no, she does, you know, she does need to do better than she has been, but the fact she's being sent over here, uh, and she just, you know, just running on, running on at the end last time at left Sound, I thought it was enough for, to tell me that she's on her way back. Yeah, I agree. I, 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 I thought she was a big prize, mainly because I went through the entire field and I thought she's the only actual genuine fast ground horse mm -hmm. in here. Everything else probably wants it a little bit uh, a bit easier. So four barons could be interested at 11 to 1. Uh, the Lily, Lily Langtree stakes, though, on our uh, poll uh, goes to Cela Rosa. Apparently 42% of you. Emily Dickinson, 37. Yes, yes. Uh, is a yes, yes for 5% of you. 
14%. Uh, uh, I think that something else might win it. Uh, as for the, uh, the, uh, the rest, Tom Leach is a fan of forbearance. Uh, Glenn Artney each way for Racing Demon as well. Will says C. La Rosa. Did you moderate that comment? Uh, I, I, did, I did. Could you tell? Could you tell? Um, I get the feeling that Tom Leach has got some past history with, uh, with forbearance. Uh, so, um, uh, good luck, Tom. If uh, uh, Let us know how your statistics stack up. If they're as good as Keel's when you abandon a horse, uh, then we should all be back in it as well. Uh, but uh, the Lily Langtree Stakes, C. La Rosa, um, a warm favourite here, Simon, but there's clearly quite a bit of support for Emily Dickinson. She's definitely shaunted up in the betting. Yeah, she has. So there's been money for her. There's also been money for Forbearance and Viola. I think Forbearance was as big as 16 to 1 in places today, now 11 to 1. Interesting enough, our, our In the No special is quite good then on that basis because we're, we've, we're offering 2 to 1 from 6 to 4, an Irish trained winner. Emily Dickinson is 2 to 1 anyway. So effectively, we get Forbearance chucked in free and obviously Putty Kills has made a very good case for her, really. So. And maybe, you know, so if you fancy Emily Dickinson anyway, you might as well back the Irish, the in the no special, because you get forbearance chucked in as well. So um, I thought of Celia Rose. The only thing I say about Celia Rose, funny enough, because I remember what, obviously, everybody's watched that, uh, the Haydock race over and over again because of the incident with Free Wind and Ashada. But they were both rated 113 Free Wind. Ashada was a 114. Celia Rose were only 103. So, I mean, even in the circumstances, she actually, you know, on ratings level, she ran a, a good race. This is not as deep as that race based on those ratings. So, I suppose she does deserve to be favourite. And she sort of feels like the most progressive filly. So, I can see why she's favourite. And I'd probably uh, maybe may, maybe end up, I would probably go for her as a tip. But it's, uh, it's a fascinating race. And that forbearance, the fact that she's coming over here, Jess Carrington, with this uh, filly, and that last year's form was clearly far superior to what she's shown this year. They clearly, I imagine, they're hoping that that ground uh, will 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 see her sort of bounce back to form. And if she does, then she's not going to be far away. Okay, Cela Rosa, then fifteen to eight market leader for the Lily Langtree Stakes. I don't know why I keep saying the name. I can barely barely <laughs> get it out every time uh, for the feature race tomorrow. Kiels, that's what we're going with. What are you back in? Forbearance. Forbearance, it is. Tom Siegel. I hope it's not the feature race. Blimey, is this the feature race? Good <laughs> grief. Si, you've got to sort uh, out this card. Good it's, it's, it's a group two, isn't it? Uh, uh, it's a group two. Uh, I don't know. Si, you've got to sort out this card. You've got William Buick elsewhere. You've got Frankie <laughs> elsewhere. Get a good race on this card, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because uh, I've heard. Uh, are you are you behind? Are you are you changing the racing calendar, Simon? Is this this is, is is it all down to you? Can you do you wield that sort of influence? No, of course I can't. <laughs> but I like that Tom thinks I can. That's the most important thing. I'm yeah. flattered. I just thought I thought uh, that Tom had revealed that you were a secret <laughs> secret mastermind, perhaps. Um, what wins the two forty five, Tom? I can't remember what you went for now. Uh, I can't remember what I went for. Nothing is what I will go for. But I thought Viola had a chance. Okay. Very well. Uh, I'll agree with Keels with four bearings. And Simon? C. La Rosa. Okay, C. La Rosa. It is. Uh, we've got a price boost, apparently, Simon. We've done that, Have you done it? We've done it. We've done it, yeah. Done yeah, it, yeah. I thought you had, yeah. The producers yeah. coming through, we've got a price boost. They've missed it. We've had the kip, There you go, it's another straight winner of the Lily Lentry. It's a cracker. <laughs> Two to one out from 15 to eight. Yeah. Get involved. Get involved. Producer just falling asleep at the desk. It's been a long week for him, to be fair. Um, then we go on to the second best uh, race on our <laughs> tomorrow. The Coral Stewards Cup, a heritage handicap over six furlongs uh, where uh, people will be getting stuck into this uh, with, uh, with extra places and I'm sure price boosts uh, coming out of your ears in a second, Simon, as well. But it's Mr Wagyu, uh, who is 8-1 uh, to one, uh, market leader for the Quinn Stable, who already won a sprint at good with this week. Uh, Inver Park is 9-1. to one. When the dealing's done, 9-1. to one. Regional is 9-1. to one. Great Ambassador is 10 to 1. Chill Chill is 11s. First Folio 12s. Popmaster is 12s. Uh, other ones to throw in as well. We've got Summergand, of course, previous winner of this uh, race. Uh, uh, Batwan as well. Um, nope, not going anywhere near it. Uh, Comanche <laughs> Falls, uh, Anaf, Retea, uh, Gulliver. Uh, would uh, would have a chance if he uh, if he travelled, of course. Uh, Mackinac Method, St Lawrence as well. Got a, a group horse in a handicap there, uh, about odds of 20, 25 to 1, and plenty of others, including another Holly Doyle ride in the shape of Tab Deed, who uh, is becoming very attractively handicapped for Archie Watson as well. Uh, but it is the uh, the Yorkshire Raider, the Curra winner, Mr Wagyu, who um, certainly doesn't mind travelling for the cash, Tom, who, uh, who heads the bet in here. Uh, it's a sprint handicap. 
Uh, you've uh, you've watched one replay and picked out the winner, I'm sure. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, I watched the Stewart. I watched the Wokingham again. Just and, the one uh, race. You picked. That's the race you picked, is it? That's the one. That's the one. <laughs> and a couple of races from last year. Yeah, I didn't watch Mr. Wagger or Inver Park or where the deals are done or regional or because I don't think they're quite good enough, is my opinion, to win a, a good Stewards Cup. I thought. Great Ambassador is probably a group horse, and I know Chill Chill is a good horse. And she was the one I came down on most because she was beaten three quarters of a length in the Haydock Sprint Cup. She was beaten two lengths in the Nunthorpe last year. She's a fast ground. She has to have fast ground. She's got Harry Davis claiming five, so she's not giving weight away to the ones around her. In fact, she's getting weight off some of them. She's only got, uh, she's only, she doesn't even have to give a stone to the bottom one. I just thought Chill Chill could be a class above. Uh, don't know about the draw stall 11. Don't really care. Get it wrong even if I did. And the other one, wait for it, that I quite liked, Ross. Batwan. There you go. I thought Batwan had a chance. Completely wiped out twice in the Wokingham, which is why I ended up on him. That was my form study as it went. Got wiped out twice. Ended up running nearly wider than most. Finished a length behind Fresh after getting stopped by a loose horse. Came out twice since, gave weight to some good horses and was only beaten two short, three short heads the next time. And then last time, best ever run according to Racing Post rating, second to Garrus. Wins, wings of War and Boutamont, group, group race winners well behind. Haley's riding, big fan of Haley in, in these races, takes her time. Batwan. There you go, Batwan, who I cannot believe he's not trained by Adam West. They really have missed the <laughs> trick there, haven't they? <laughs> missed the trick with Batwan, yeah, who uh, who could be of interest. Um, but yeah, you uh, you say about Chill Chill, yeah, this, this is the thing that stood out to me, Kills. The, the last few years, we've had, um, well, I'll tell you what, I'll get some stats. You want some stats? You love a, you love a stat. Uh, first off, it's 2006, the last time a horse rated lower than 100 won. And then the last four years, it's been won by horses rated as high or higher than the top three in the uh, uh, in the handicap this year. You've had genuine group horses uh, uh, with it. Obviously, Cardem, uh, we, uh, we, yeah. we've seen as well. And you've got Great Ambassador and Chill Chill, Chill, Chill who are genuinely group class horses at double figure odds off winnable marks in a handicap. Yeah, I can, it, it can, certainly, it can certainly see the case. In fact, I was going to back Chill Chill last week when she was 20s, and uh, for some reason I never got round to it. So, having missed the price, I was sort of, sort of um, got sort of fed up with it and didn't. Right. <laughs> I okay. would, uh, have decided not to get involved. So, so uh, I, I started looking elsewhere. I mean, I have changed my mind about 25 times in this race already. Like, you know, and I keep you know, it's, it's one thing or one thing or another. Uh, we have to talk about Mr. Wagyu, of course. You know, yep. this meeting, you know, sometimes it straddles July and August, doesn't it? And if it was, if the race was run on the Saturday, the first or second of August, there would be people saying he couldn't possibly win because he's only ever won in June or July. He's 15 from 29 <laughs> in June or July, and he's never won in any other month, which is just quite an amazing record. Isn't it? Yeah. Like, you know, but he obviously won the uh, consolation race last year, uh, so he acts on the track. He's in great form. He won in Ireland last time, uh, so. You know he's gonna he's gonna go well, but I ended up thinking right. I don't know what you know, as we were talking earlier on. I don't know where they're gonna go. So I back one on either side. I back Ratia uh, of Julie Cabachos. Now she won. Uh, he won. You know in career best form at, at Newcastle last time. One by two lengths, going away very strong at the finish. And although he's never been here, he's run really well at both Newmarket tracks. Now they, you know there are plenty of sections of those Newmarket tracks are downhill. So I don't think he'll have any problem. It might be a bit. It may be a little bit quick for him. He's got seven furlong form, but he can be keen as well. So I thought he might run well. And I've backed Holly again. I've backed Tad Deed. I'm a bit of a sucker for Tad Deed. I mean, obviously he's got um, he's got your back form, your back group form because he won the Hackwood yeah. Stakes at Newby, beat the Tin Man uh, a few yeah. years ago. He's a bit uh, car Demask. He thought he was going to go on yeah, to great things. Yeah, you think, yeah, you think, you think he was going to do really well, and but he did shake really well in two listed races. Uh, earlier this season, the third at Windsor, third uh, to Russell, uh, when actually managing to find trouble in a small field at Haydock. Uh, and, you know, he's running two handicaps since and things just haven't gone right for him. He dwelt at the start of the Wokenham. Uh, then Holly decided to take him to the far side group, only to see the whole of the far side group come back to the stands rail. So uh, he had no chance basically from then. And then uh, he got in trouble again at the start, got, got wiped out almost at the start. Uh, in that five furlong race won by Mountain Peak, but he was—he's you know, only beaten three and a half lengths. He was only half length behind when the deal is done, 
who was admittedly eye catching, but but you know half left between and one of them's favourite, the other one was thirty three to one. Uh, you know, so I thought if things drop right, off a, off a mark of a hundred, he has the ability uh, to get in there, but they've got to drop right. Yeah, I mean mainly because that, that twenty eight box. Yeah, if they if the first four round were drawn single figures and you've won your side, it'll be the writers oh, exactly, all over again. Exactly. Well, I mean, you know, I spent years backing Summer Gand, who won this two years ago. Yeah. And of course, I jumped ship and backed Kimmy Five that year. Like, you know, and got nutted right on the line by some again. And it's just so typical. So I'm, I'm prepared for that to happen. And he's got a chance because he's bounced back to form again, and he's way yeah. lower than he was. Uh, you know, because he's run, he's run really well in two big handicaps. I think he was fifth in the Wokenham, wasn't he last time? Yeah. And this uh, is, yeah. I mean, that's this. You get the feeling that this has been. Uh, I mean, it was a, clearly been the plan for your raw barns and your blue for use. They've managed to drop this horse ten pounds since the turn of the exactly, year. Exactly. Yeah. 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 He's got to have a shout, hasn't he? Yeah. Okay, uh, some again uh, could be of interest. The uh, the old boy, plenty of favourites uh, out there, I'm sure for for you. But um, uh, Mr. Wagyu heading the better here at eight to one. There has been a bit of cash uh, clearly for uh, for Mr. Wagyu uh, at uh, at the top of the betting here, Simon. Um, what do you got? Um, seven, eight, nine, ten places. Money back if you. I still want. Can you please ask? I want an, an offer. Money back if you win your side and get beaten by the other side. <laughs> that's you've got to bring this in for these big field handicaps because that's the worst bit. Great idea. Yeah, it is a good idea. Okay, I'll take that back. Thanks for the idealization session, Ross. Um, we'll cover that later. Um, yeah, listen, I mean, it's a great race. I mean, you know, it's fun sponsoring it this year for the first time. David Stevens did the draw with Nick Luck on Racing TV on Thursday. It wasn't quite like Rod Stewart esque, but it's quite amusing to see him pulling the, na the, the, uh, the, the names out of the hat. And uh, we're paying six places rather than the four. Um, uh, and in the nose, special Ed Walker obviously has two very nice tight chances, Popmaster and uh, Great Ambassador, to, to train for Ed Walker to train the winner. The Ed in those specialists, 13 to 2 from 5 to 1. If you obviously add up the percentage of the two prices of the two horses, it comes in a lot shorter than that. So if you like them both, um, there's the in the nose special. Uh, that I picked out the husband and wife combination. I thought Popmaster really solid that second run, second in the Woking, with Woking great big race form. He's drawn low, so back him with Tom Marcotte on board. And then Tab D, like Paul said, I thought the Holly Doyle uh, on Tab D, drawn high, uh, obviously very, very well handicapped now versus some of his form um, a couple of years ago. So those two interest me. And, and Jim Crowley's quite interesting. He's riding Anna for Mick Appleby. And in his blog, which I know you've all read, but his blog today he said, he's a horse I've been watching for a while. I've been badgering Mick Appleby for the ride. They finally relent and let me on him. I think he has a great chance. Second in the group in Newcastle. He's a three-year-old, and obviously I won this race from Cardem, who was three at the time. I'm happy being drawn as tall five. It's a tough race to win, but I think he ticks all the right boxes. And out of blind loyalty to the Coral Ambassador, I'm going to back him as well. Okay, lovely stuff, yeah. Um, one thing I noticed the other day after, after he won on Royal Scotsman is I went back and had a look. I thought, Jim Crowley, he's good in these sprints. Um, if you just backed his... Over the past two years, over six furlongs, Jim Crowley has won 20%. Uh, of his races, which I think is absolutely insane. Um, it, you'd have made a profit just back in and blind. Bearing in mind, everyone else in here, uh, percentage-wise, is sort of between 10, 15 and 16%. Um, but I, I know he rides a lot of these types of horses, obviously, Jim. Uh, but um, to win one in five over six furlongs, including in decent races like this and on um, uh, group races like Royal Scotsman the other day, He's, uh, he clearly is a man for the big occasion in these uh, in these sprints. So uh, he could be of interest on an AF. Mr. Waggy, though, eight to one favourite here for the Stewards Cup. Um, Tom, uh, what are you selecting, and um, uh, where's the pace come from? <laughs> you don't want me to do it again. You seriously don't want me to do it again. <laughs> I do. Batwan and Chill Chill, and I have no idea about the pace, as you well know, Mr. Briley. Absolutely, uh, Keels. Pace is largely high. Best ground might be low. So, <laughs> down who knows? It is. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've backed Tab Deed and Rot here. Okay, very well. And I will go with uh, everyone's looking for a group horse in a handicap. Well, there's two staring at you there Great Ambassador and Chill Chill. Uh, they're at double figure odds. Simon? Uh, yeah, I'm going for Popmaster, Tab Deed, and Anaf. I'm having three. Okay, lovely stuff. You thought uh, Tom's. Uh, Batwine song was bad. It's a good job I don't fancy Popmaster or the Ken Bruce impression to be coming out. Uh, as for the uh, the rest, uh, Chill Chill will win more than likely, says uh, Off World, um, which is a, a good shout. Anaf X Shadwell, says Jim Freighter. Maybe Crowley knows. Well, we had a X Shadwell 1 2, didn't we, in the uh, uh, 
uh, in the big race today, so that could definitely be be working. First folio looks laid out for this, says Destiny Sounds. Um, great ambassador, says Frito Bandito. They're not mad keen on the the jockey, uh, and as far the uh, the rest, um, not a great deal of other opinions in the Stewards Cup. Uh, so there we go. There's a few for you to go forward with in tomorrow's big race. Seven furlongs the distance for the next race, 3.55, a handicap here uh, for the three-year-olds. It's wide open. Uh, Spirit and Guru is 9-2 to two market leader though here. Galiac is 11-2 to two, uh, for the Muir and Grassic combination. Positive Impact 11-2. Waddleton 6s, Koi Koi 6s, Zero Carbon 6s. Uh, Lassadude is 8-1, to 17-2 to two bar those, including Roman Dragon. Loads of less timeout winners coming into this. Uh, decent handicap form as uh, well. Uh, and uh, even Gisburn uh, represents a yard in form. He's the outsider at 33 to 1, and he's got some classy form as well, Paul Keeley. But I thought the favourite was a little bit short when I looked at this race, and given that you've backed one against it, I think you probably agree. Yeah, yeah I did, yeah. I really like Galiak here. Uh, I, think he's, I think he's got a great chance in the race, sets shapes up for him perfectly because there's at least four front, possible front runners in the race. Uh, last time at Sandown, he did not get, you know, it was quite a steady gallop, and he got outpaced mm. when they quickened up, and he was starting to run on again when he got hampered, and I think he probably should have been second. Now, the winner there, Golden, Golden Voice, uh, was, is really progressive. Uh, so I'm not too worried about him getting beat there. It didn't really stack up for him. But he's one of only three horses in the race who's run at this track before, and when he did, he took to it like a duck to water. That was in May, uh, and he absolutely hacked up. He won going away at the line by just, you know, by just under two lengths. And the runner-up was Find, who next time out finished second in the Jersey Stakes, and has gone mm -hmm. up 19 pounds, and the third was Anaf who was runner-up to uh, Sense of Duty in the chip chase next time and has gone up a few pounds as well for that. Uh, so, you know, you can't argue with the form. Obviously, Galliot is £9 higher now, but that's because he's also won again since, because he won at Newmarket. And I think the way this race stacks up with the pace they're likely to go, uh, they're going to come back to him. And I actually, I'll, I'll go as far as saying I expect him to win. OK. I have a feeling we might have found your uh, your nap of the of the day tomorrow. Uh, good jockey booking as well. Um, David Probert's knocking in winners left, right and centre oh, in the past yeah. week or so. So yep. that could be interesting. He's 10, uh, ten winners uh, from 40 rides in the past two weeks, David Probert. So that's a uh, uh, rock solid strike rate for him. Um, Galliac then, very confident selection for Paul Keeley. Uh, are you as confident about this race, Tom? Uh, no, definitely not. I thought it was really tricky, but I did... What, I, I got it down to two. Galliac was definitely one of them. The other one I like is Woderton <coughs> for Andrew Balding. I thought that he's got course form. Second to Lawful Command, who ran very well in the mile this uh, today. Uh, uh, he was a totally different horse, I thought, last time. The first time he hit fast ground. I thought he, he was really impressive at uh, Epsom. Well, that was quite a competitive race, and he won it by four and a half lengths. Time before at Chester, he sort of went nuts in the start, uh, missed the break, and still ran well in a very good race, won by Outstrip, very valuable race. I think he's just getting better. I think the ground suits him. Like he all says, course form, he's got it. Just think he might be a little bit better than what Galliac. That's my feeling. That was why I ended up on him, and he was a slightly bigger price. So they would be my two. I thought Koi Koi would need softer ground. Positive impact has a chance because if if he got his own way out front, not sure he will with Lasuda and Zero Carbon in there and a few other Roman Dragon. Spirit of Nguru, and you say it's the colours that make the favourites. I think it's the trainer that makes the favourites for these uh, Haggis horses. Don't know why he's favourite, really, Spirit of Nguru, I thought. Galliac should probably be favourite, but I slightly prefer Woderton. I just thought I just thought I was really impressed with him at Epsom last time, and I think the fast ground is exactly what he wants. Okay, Woderton is a six to one shot then uh, here, and I'll throw a big price one in here because I think I'm a gambler is potentially a little interest in here. <laughs> could, could have mentioned him. He's yeah. a he, he's a he's a real blowout horse, isn't he? Yeah, like, you know, four times in the first two and four times near the last and first, but he's got he is. Well, what 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 appeals to me tomorrow is first off he's dropping down in grade. Uh, second off, he absolutely loves rattling fast ground. But as Tom just pointed out, there's three or four front runners in here. He's often quite keen. I think yeah. potentially from box four, he could have that perfect sit and just hopefully. Yeah, just I can see. Keep going I, 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 I can see him running really well. I, it was one of the ones I looked at. I thought he was more interested than some of the some of the shorter price ones. I mean, he came from miles off it at Beverly when they went really fast yeah. earlier in the season, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, and he um, he ran. He, he just got d done on the line in the, um, mm. the Scottish the Scottish stewards. Yeah. Sprint yeah. the other day, where where he ju he got yeah. basically got beat with horses with a little bit more of a turn yeah, of pace. Exactly. And he just kept going. And since and going. then, he's been completely tailed off. <laughs> well, <laughs> but that's how that, he goes. That's Mark Johnson yeah. horses for you in these handicaps as well, isn't yeah. it? So um, I'd rather take 
sort of eight, what is he, 18 to one, I'm a gambler, Simon? Yeah, he's uh, got I'm a gambler. I think he's 16 to one with us. I mean, you, you can get, I think you can nick a bit of 18, but he's been back to everywhere, actually. He was 20 to one generally earlier. He's tw as short as 12 to one, so he looks like a horse who could move in the market. I think that's the, the key to this race. Uh, both positive impact and Spirit of Nguru are looking really weak. There's been money for Galliac, Woderton and Koi Koi. They're all around that nine to two to six to one uh, price. And so actually any one of them, by, by race time tomorrow, you could see one of them almost like a three to one favorite if momentum has got behind them. Do you know what I mean? So it's hard to know which one, uh, even zero carbon could be well backed. And uh, Lasso Dude is interesting. That's the one Jim Crowley rides. Last time out at Newmarket, Sumion rode him. Um, and he just didn't turn up. They blamed the ground, but the ground when he'd won at Doncaster the time before was just as quick. Uh, he ran second to Secret State um, the time before that. Um, and Jim Crowley is quite bullish, thinks he'll run really well. So he's a big price at eight to one. He's quite a big horse. He's got to handle the, the Goodwood track. But if he does, I think it'll go very well. Okay, a few selections then for the penultimate race of Glorious Good of 2022. I'll go for I'm a gambler at a big price. You're a gambler, Keels. What are you back here? Yeah, yeah, Galliac. Galliac it is. Uh, Tom? A uh, Woderton. Woderton it is. And Simon? Lassie Dude. Lovely stuff. <laughs> Go. Is that a Scottish accent? I don't know. Accidentally, <laughs> potentially. Uh, but... He's an Arabic horse. That's what do. Yeah. Lovely. You gave it the uh, the gravitas it deserved. Uh, last <laughs> race of the uh, of the meeting then. Uh, and Forest Falcon is 130 favourite for the nine furlong handicap to close off the card, which uh, this year you will note is not uh, a uh, an apprentice race, which took me by surprise when looking at the past winners earlier on. Uh, 130 Forest Falcon, Ajero 9 to 2, Bolt Hole 11 to 2, Mark of Respect 9s, Rainbow Colours 9s, Fantasy Believer 10s with Kitsune Power uh, 11 to 1 and bigger prices the rest. Um, uh, the, the Johnson team. Um, did a similar thing with Vale of Kent a couple of years ago. Uh, Tom uh, ran a really good race earlier on in the week, came back and won on the Saturday. Forrest Falcon was given a lovely ride by Frankie. Harry Davis just had to replicate it. Uh, yeah, tougher though, isn't it? I thought this is a this is a really good race, isn't it? Normally the last race, I mean this this race should be on the telly. This race we should be betting on. This is a proper yeah. good race. This isn't it? Eighteen runner handicap uh, like this with Royal Ascot form and glorious Goodwood form coming in. I mean I'm. I'm just, basically the best race on the card for me i like a jero a bit i thought he ran a blinder i know he's a hurdler and whatever but i think he's keeps bumping into really good horses he's just incredibly unlucky he bumped into uh candleford candleford yeah candleford. Nath candleford nathaniel green at yeah. the time before at chepstow and he went way too fast at ascot over a mile and a half uh when it was his first run at a mile and a half i just thought he went way too fast and didn't really get home I think this trip will be fine for him. I think he's got plenty of pace. I remember David Bass telling me, I did a Cheltenham preview one day, and he said, the fastest horse we've got in the yard by a mile is a Jero. He's a flat horse against all, we've got a load of jumpers, and this horse is seriously quick. And he had he had a horse running in the uh, Supreme Novices. He, said, no, no, he couldn't keep up with a Jero. So I don't worry about him dropping back in trip here. Uh, he's got a nice jaw. Jim Crowley's on board, so hopefully Simon will have uh, some good words mm -hmm. to say about him. And I, I like him. I think he's going to go really well. Has to go right-handed. Uh, the track will suit him. Yeah, big fan. Okay, yeah. I, I get the feeling, Ajera, there's a few horses that you keep coming back to time and time again, Tom. Yeah, I think this, this is a very, very much a contrast for you, for you and Keels. I feel like Keels picks one out, and if it doesn't work out, he, he, he's off in search of another, whereas you will follow a horse seemingly well, three, four times. I'm not saying that well, there's, there's well, a wrong way I do, though, don't I? No, no, no. But when I jump off, that's when they win. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying you're wrong, I'm just saying you do... You, you... I'm only, I'll only follow them if they ran well. Yeah, of I mean, course, no, I'm, I'm not... I'm, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah, he yeah. I, I thought yeah. it was, yeah. you know, take Candleford yeah. out, he's gone, like, blitz of 11 seconds all the way down the back, and he still comes second yeah. with contact and some good horses yeah. in behind him. So... Yeah, I, I just thought that was a. That was I'm, an not, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not saying you follow him off a cliff. Yeah. I'm just saying something. It's, 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 it's actually quite rare for you to tip the, the same horse twice on this show. Maybe it's mm. just. Yeah, I know, that's I, anecdotal. I, yeah, I, I like him too. Um, <laughs> just because, just because like, he, he did go that fast. I mean, you know, for a horse who started in bumpers and ran over hurdles and is a half bow at a Charbel, but he is by Red Jazz, mm -hmm. who was a seven furlong horse, and he's obviously got loads of pace. And yeah, coming back in trip might just really work. Uh, you know, I, I mean, to. Candleford came from a fair way off the pace of that Ascot race, yeah. and there were loads of others queuing up behind him. So for to hang on, uh, given what it, how fast he'd gone, I think you know I think that was a really good effort. So, so yeah, the uh, the, the favourite um, Johnson did the double with same double with Landerman uh, ten year ago, uh, 
Mm. But Landerman had still five on the final day. Uh, we've got to remember that the bend is a lot tighter on the final day than, yeah. than it is earlier in the week. So, so although he, Forrest Falcon, did it from a big from a high draw earlier in the week, it's going to be harder this time. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I I, I fancy Ajero because he's got a low draw and he's got the pace to make the use of it. Okay, Ajero, then it is for uh, both our pundits, uh, and I'll take the same hymn sheet that I took earlier in the handicap. Goodwood form here. I think there's a couple that look overpriced from Goodwood form. Sweet reward is one of them. Um, for some for some reason made the running at Sandown last time out, but that Arcoob form looks so solid and um, won here earlier in the uh, in the season. Uh, and Fantasy Believer who. Used to be a bit of a, a a bit of a thinker, but he keeps flying home to win. They're drawn one and two. Uh, they could be uh, they could be very interesting. I thought for uh, for informed yards and informed jockeys. So Johnny Portman did me a favour today. I'm hoping he does again with Sweet Reward and Fantasy Believer could power home as well, assuming that they uh, they part like the Red Sea on the inside. Uh, mm -hmm. Danielle Nicholson says Junkanoo hopefully to see Dave Orton going mad again in the studio. Yeah, yeah Junkanoo his uh, his big winner. Uh, at Glorious uh, Goodwood, was it last season, the season before? I don't know, it all blends into one the past two years, doesn't it? But uh, yes, potentially Junkanoo, 25 to 1. Actually a skinny price in comparison to the day he won. Um, Simon, last race of Glorious Goodwood 2022, please see us out. Yeah, listen, we've got playing five places, not four. Just a reminder that uh, even with extra places, you still get best odds guaranteed, which isn't always the case with other firms. And we're best odds guaranteed now, so you don't have to wait till the morning. Again, some firms, it kicks in uh, on the day, but it's best odds guaranteed with Coral right now. Um, Ajero is the one for me, lots of reasons. I tipped him at Royal Ascot. He bumped into a fantastic winner in Candleford. Uh, Jim Crowley rides him. He hasn't sat at him. He can't say anything necessarily quite positive, but what I would say is, Jim Crowley is a fantastic jockey at Goodwood. It's his local track. You know, he's, he's had loads of winners. Batash, Maidani, you know, Mahatha. Here comes when. He's just He just rides the track well. So the fact they've reached for him, um, I think in the hope that maybe he, des he deserves a win. He's got four fantastic seconds to good horses. I hope he wins. I think he will. Uh, he's 92, and so he'll do for me. OK, there you go. That wraps it up then. Glorious Goodwood 2022, the final race uh, of the uh, the card. Uh, and uh, that brings the show to an end as well. We'll get the naps in a second. But first off, thank you to everyone for watching at home. If you haven't already, please do like and subscribe to uh, the uh, the stream. Get that algorithm ticking along. Uh, it's been a cracking five days of, uh, of action. And uh, hopefully we can see you out with a red hot Saturday tomorrow as well. But as ever... Uh, really is uh, pointless doing this if you're not watching at home. So thank you for tuning in. But before we go, let's get day five Glorious Goodwood naps from the panel. Starting off with you, Paul Keeley. Yeah, Galliac in a 3.55, really like him. Yeah, I thought that might be the case. Uh, what about you, Tom? Chill, chill. You're a disgrace. You're an absolute disgrace. Simon Clare, nap of the day, please. Ajero in the last. A Jero in the last. Okay. The problem is, uh, I don't think I've, I don't, yeah, I don't think I've actually. I'm, I'm going to a Dutch a nap. I'm going to Dutch a nap. That Goodwood form in the staying handicap. HMS President and, uh, and Red Flyer. They're the two. But um, yeah, that'll do. That'll do for day five of Glorious Goodwood. Again, thank you to everyone for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you to Paul, Tom, and Simon, of course, as well. Uh, and we'll be back for the Ebor, of course, in a few weeks' time. Have a good Saturday afternoon.